Pete, uh, here we are again. What went wrong? Uh, I, I, I don't want to look too much uh, at the past. I think people are fed up with me justifying this and that. I, I think that you know we were very clear this year. We wanted to have a decent year and we wanted to do our best to uh, get out of the division that we we're in. Uh, it all started okay, uh, but very soon we weren't getting the results. And, you know, it upset supporters, but I'm the biggest supporter and I'm one that if we get that upset, we can actually do something about it. So I felt that we'd reached the point where we had to do something about it. And um, I'm really pleased because um, you can see the, you know, the, the succession planning that was there, the, the things and the fact that we've been able to do something and get Mike, who I'm really excited about. You've spoken to him today. I think you'll share that excitement. Um, and uh, we've managed to get it done really quickly, really professionally. So, you know, have we learned something over the years with all this chopping and changing? I hope you can see, yeah, we're learning because you can't drop the ball. You can't lose a few games. Uh, every game matters. And, and particularly when we've had a quarter of the season gone, we've got to now do a lot in the next three quarters of the season. And of course, when you get such a dramatic change, um, you, 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 that's going to take a little bit of time to filter through. Um, and uh, though we've got really good technical players, they've got to feel content to be more risk taking. You heard Mike talk about the bravery that you need to have. Um, I don't think that can come overnight. Um, he's not going to have any time to have worked with them and we're going to go three games. But in those three games, I expect to see the team being a little bit different in the games in terms of different personnel because I think he has to learn what he's got in, in, in a short space of time. Um, but I am excited about it. I'm pleased that, as I say, as a football club, we're able to act and do something swiftly and look forward again because I'm fed up of looking past. I took a lot of responsibility for last year. Uh, some would say maybe too much because it's not just on me. Uh, but at the same time, um, we've tried to do something about it. We tried to go a pragmatic route. Um, and now we're trying to do the route that we're doing. And so, as I say, I really want to look forward. I, I, I totally understand that and I, I and everyone sat around you right now wants to look forward but I, I just wonder whether we can just talk a little bit more about the appointments because there's been a lot of appointments in a short space of time. Who's getting it wrong, Pete? Who's getting it wrong? Well, I, I the managers, the players, the, the, the recruitment, where, where are the mistakes being made? I don't think you can necessarily say that their mistakes are being made. Liam Manning is a fantastic coach. I mean, he's proving it again this year. I didn't want to lose Liam Manning. People can say you gave him too long, uh, or if you'd given him that long, should you have taken it to January? These are the kind of hindsight things that are great about football. Um, but I'm not embarrassed about hiring, hiring Liam Manning at all. I think he's one of the top coaches in the, you know, in the football league. Um, Mark Jackson, um, when Mark came, he didn't come with his team because that didn't happen. Uh, what he expected to happen didn't. When I look back, I think that was a real crucial thing for Mark because it made him very lonely and we had to put things together over a period of time. It didn't give him the smoothest chance and I'm so pleased to see him over in Australia putting his career back together. He's, as again, the fans will, will, will testament, he has a fighting spirit and, and, and a positivity and an energy, which I think is, is really good. Um, it didn't work though, only by one goal, but it didn't work. And so I went pragmatic. Again, I think a lot of people uh, in my position would think, OK, I've tried new and I've tried, let's go for something really experienced. Let's make sure they've got promotions out of this league, etc., etc." And we ran the most different thing that we've ever done with this, you know, interview panels and lots of people. That's not the way I've ever hired managers in the past. And when we look at the managers I have had in, hired in the past, you know, Paul Lintz left us to go to the Premier League. Um, you know, Roberto Di Matteo won a Champions League for Chelsea. Carl Robinson's done over 700 games in the Football League after we gave him his first job. Um, you know, uh, Robbie Nielsen didn't work for us because certain managers just don't work at certain clubs. Leaves us, goes back to Hearts, gets them promoted, comes third in the Scottish Premier League, puts them back into Europe. Um, you know, Russell Martin, I think, was an inspired choice uh, because we've all seen Russ become a very, very serious uh, football league manager that with, a, with the ultimate aim of being a premiership manager. And I watch his results every week still, and I really hope he gets there. So I'm not going to be embarrassed about what I've done at all, actually. What I have to be prepared to do is, if it doesn't work, make a change. That's the, that's the thing that separates me from being from a normal supporter, that I can actually do something about it. Because at the end of the day, that's what I am. We all watch the same thing. 
we all the other thing I think that's been really interesting is how you think as a football supporter that it doesn't matter as long as you win um, and that winning is, is, is everything but, that, but actually we like to watch as well um, and, and I think that's been um, that's been quite important to us so I'm you know what I'm most pleased about again is the professionalism we've been able to do in making a, 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 a big decision and do something about it immediately and know what we wanted to do about it immediately and then actually do it um, again I, 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 I don't see the criticism really mm. so, so just finally on this because you know there's a, there's a lot more that we need to talk about from a positive point of view uh, and I want to do that trust me but if, if, if successive managers have had their qualities and abilities including Liam Manning and, yeah. and Mark Jackson and, and yeah. Graham Alexander the, the recent three are the players at fault? Are the players the issue here? Are the players, you know, no. there have been accusations of the players at certain points under Graham Alexander down tools to a certain extent. There was a disconnect between him and the players. Is that true? No, I think that's just, a, that's, just a, that's an easy thing to be able to say. When you have a, you know, again, one of the things that, so we have a very big squad. I think our squad's too big because it means that you're leaving big players out. And when players aren't in the team, they're not going to be very happy about it. And I wouldn't expect anything less from them. They, they want to, they professional footballers to go and play in front of a crowd every on a Saturday. So now, I, I, again, I, I think that what's what's become clear to me, and I'm sure it's to supporters out there, certain managers fit certain clubs, and certain managers can go to a club do really well. They can go to another club, brilliant managers, and it doesn't work as well because. It's about the environment that dynamic. you're in. It's a, the, the dynamic. dynamic. Yes. yes, it's about that the, the way everyone aligns or not, and and and, and that it doesn't matter what kind of manager you are. There's certain things, and and I think what's become clearer to us is the kind of club we are is the club that has to be a bit more experimentative, has to take things on a little bit new. Now, I actually haven't done that with Mike's done over 150 games uh, of men's football, professional men's football in a league that's just as competitive as ours, um, and so. But but we are now. There's no scars. He's able to move up, um, and and I'm really really hoping that the technical abilities that we have in our players, because we have some really good technical players, what we haven't had for the last year and a half is the team, because it hasn't all gelled. Now we've done a lot of recruitment in the summer, so we've got a much older age profile. We've got a bit more experience, so that the younger players have got somebody to lean on. And Mike's task now is to find the team out of what we've got, find. There will be players that will probably we won't be using going forward and that, that's going to be disruptive to them and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, there'll be other places that maybe we're not as strong in a, an area that we might want to be and we'll have to do something about that. Can we? You know, we well, yeah, if we have, if we, yeah. you know, again, again in, in, this, you know, in this league we want to be a powerful club. That, that, that's why, you know, why did I make a change with the lowest position I've ever been in the history of me being a chairman of a football club? I don't think I had any choice. Um, am I excited about the change? Actually, I am, because I've learned. You know, twenty years on, I'm still learning about our club, what our club is. I think we all we've all got a much better understanding of what our club is about, and I think that despite the, the lack of successes in in, in recent in, in the last couple of seasons, you know, we've got a platform, and people can believe that we've got a platform, and we've got a back room, and we've got a we're still an exciting place for people to come to. If we were that off track, we would not be able to attract these kind of people. You've got to get the whole thing to gel together though. And then of course the minute you do, you lose your players or you lose your manager. That's football. That's exactly where we are. And that's our challenge. If we weren't so high profile, maybe we'd be able to keep some of our managers a little bit longer. Maybe you'd be able to achieve a little bit more with them. But that's the challenge we're in. And, and at the end of the day, I'd rather be known for something. I'd rather be an interesting and exciting place than not. And, and what I'm hoping that Mike can do is to bring some excitement back to us uh, on a Saturday afternoon, which ultimately I hope can turn into wins. And then those wins can then give us a platform to go forward. Um, but for me, I don't want to put too much pressure on them. I think maybe that was a problem in the summer. We put so much pressure on everybody, myself, Graham, the, the, the players, every, every, everybody can get crushed by pressure because nothing is worked out now. We've got a whole year, a whole season to go. You have loads of games to play, loads of Tuesday nights where it gets difficult, loads of Saturdays at home where we've made a mistake. We've got to get through all of those and then we can see where we are. But what I want to do um, and what I think is, is the most important thing for us now is to all get together. Um, we've had our moments 
Um, as you say, it's been more difficult than it has been in all of my time. But given where we are, I think that's totally reasonable. I'm sure I'd be exactly the same if I was the other side. Um, and we're going to try and do something about it. And what I hope people can see is I am trying to do something about it. Um, you know, we don't just let it drift. We don't just let it go on. Uh, and as I say, I think I'm also justified for why I let the Liam situation drift last year, Liam Manning. Because, like, do know what's good. He's doing okay. He's doing really He's well. Doing okay. He's a top, top, top man. Um, just one more from me, Pete. Um, and it's obviously on, on three words, style of play, um, because you've, you've already alluded to that in... in in what you've said so far. Clearly, Mike Williamson is somebody, uh, if you look at his Gateshead side, um, who, who likes to keep the ball a lot yes. and play the ball. Um, I, my concern, I think some people's concern, in League Two, can you do that? Do you need different dimensions to your game other than just keeping the ball and playing attractive football? I think what became clear, uh, you know, we had all those debates in the summer, I think what becomes clear is what our supporters and I'm going to count myself as one of those people, want to see when, you, when you're watching. And of course we want to see the team win. Of course we do. But I don't think that's all we want to see. I genuinely don't. Um, and as I say, if I was ever in any doubt of that, this last month or so has absolutely proved to me that, you know, this identity, this so-called MK way uh, that, we, that, we, that we make a joke, actually, it's quite, there's something in it because... As I say, there are not, you've probably on one hand named the EFL clubs that have got an identity, and we have got one. And, and, and as you say, what, what Mike does is it, it, it takes us in that direction. Um, but it's a very hard way of playing football. Is it harder to do that in the, in the lower leagues? It probably is. But at the same time, if you can make that work, that is how we have to be successful. And if you look back over the years when we've had our success, that's how we've played. Just quickly on the, the efficiency of, of Mike's appointment, obviously it's, it's happened very quickly. Is that a case of you learning over the years and, and getting better at it, or did he just stand out? Was he the, was he the clear candidate? I think it's a combination of all those things. Uh, again, you know, um, Liam Sweeting gets a lot of people points his finger ever since I put him up too high profile, all those, all that stuff seems like a very long time ago now, doesn't it? Um, but what Liam always is, is prepared. And, and, and we, he had a very clear idea what we should do if, if we made a change. And then the task was to see, if, well, actually, can you make it happen? Um, and that's where I'm really pleased because it needed a very quick yes from Mike. It needed Gateshead to, to work with us instead of go, oh, my God, which they easily could have done. I'm sure that's how I would have been feeling. And, and everybody was incredibly professional. And I do think that shows, you know, uh, the criticism that behind the scenes, you know, does the club work? The club is, is top draw. And, and Mike will tell you he's come into a top draw back, backroom staff. You know, he's not having to worry about half the stuff he had to worry about at Gateshead because we've got really good people that do that for him. But don't, we don't underestimate the challenge that he's got. And I absolutely don't. You can't click your fingers and suddenly it's all going to be OK. What I do know is we've got some really good technical players in the squad that I think will um, really benefit from the style of play that he's going to introduce. Um, and if we can couple that with some of the hard energy uh, that, that, that Graham was focused on and you put those two things together, then, then maybe we've got something. What do you think Graham got wrong? I don't think Graham got anything wrong. Um, I think that with hindsight, and this is with hindsight, it's about the fit of the manager to the club. And, and Graham, Graham is a winner. Graham is a, I mean, you've all, again, you've all spoken to him, you know, he, he knows what he's talking about. He's been there and got the T-shirts. And that's why I felt that experience would, would help us in our, in our hour of need. That's why he got the job. What becomes clear is that, that it, as I say, it, it, will he be successful at this club? And, 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 and as the weeks went past, the, the, the view is, well, well, maybe he won't be successful at this club. Does that mean he won't be successful if he goes somewhere? And Robbie Nielsen is a wonderful example of that. Didn't work at our club. Doesn't mean he's a bad manager or there's something wrong with him or anything like that. You've got to get that alignment. You've got to get that click. And that's about, as people, you go to, you go to school and, 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 and you know, some of the people in the class are your best mates and there's other people in the class that aren't. You know, it's about how you align. Um, and, 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 and as I say, I have learned something out of this process that it isn't just me that wants to watch, you know, the tippy tappy football or whatever you want to call it. That's what actually our support base is built on. 
um, that we like watching um, free flowing football, and it's going to come with its it's going to come with its risks. You know, um, there'll be mistakes for different reasons than maybe the mistakes under Graham, but mistakes are still mistakes are still possible at the highest level of football, let alone at League Two. And I think that what I would like is for the players to feel they can make a mistake, and and and, it, and it's not the end of the world, even if we lose a goal by it. And maybe our pressure is then to go and score two up the other end uh, instead of over worrying about it. And, if, and I think if anybody can take that fear away, it's Mike, because that's how he's played his games of football. Um, he, he's into the challenge. Um, as I say, somebody to, to for this all to happen in the way that it did, you can understand how, you know, he, the guy's quite knows what he wants to do. And, and, and we are a great step for him um, I think we can give him all the resource and the strength he needs to be able to be successful if we'd have had a pre-season maybe at the time but I, I don't know if I could have hired somebody in, in, in the summer in the same thing after where we were we've got to get to where we've got to but I hope everybody can see there's a logic and as I say I'm not going to be embarrassed about the changes of managers I'm going to be pleased that I'm actually doing something about it because that's my task as chairman and it's not cheap and it's not easy to do and you don't want to do it ever um, but at the same time if it if needs must and as I say where the club was getting to um, I, I think the needs must and I think Graham will go and be a big success in his next job uh, because we'll both have learnt something but my task here now is to give Mike every bit of backing he needs to give him the best chance of, of, of carrying on from where he got to with Gateshead and taking him on in the next step of his journey. Were you surprised how quickly the cow shed turned, how supporters turned this season? Was it a hangover from last season? And, and, and how did you personally feel about that? I think them being upset, uh, as upset as a hangover from last season, but I think that they're, what they were expecting to see on the pitch, um, which I thought would all be about winning, um, that's kind of where I'd got to in my mind uh, in the summer. Um, I think that's clear it wasn't. So I think I, I think I did learn something about our, our, you know, because actually, we were there was a lot of similarities in feeling between what I was watching and what they were watching, and that's not a direct criticism of Graham. People can take it as that. As I say, it's about horses for courses. It's about making sure you've got and getting those alignments right. And what happens is you start to split out of alignments, and the result of that is always not it's not going to be good on the pitch. If you can get that alignment right, then you've got the chance of going forward. Um, so um, yeah, I think I have learned something about our club, and, and and I think that I'm probably very much on the same page as the majority of our supporters in terms of what they want to see. But what we all want to see after the horrors of the last year and a half is the club going forward again, um, and that's the task. You know, whatever it takes, whatever I've got to do, I'm desperately trying to make sure that happens because that's why we're here. That's why we do it.